All right, today is the day, and as you can see, we are back with Arete. It has been a while for me to do a video on laminations. Um, if you remember back, we had quite a few regular videos on that in laminating the tub, especially we were working a lot on that. And I got a lot of comments on people saying, um, I don't want to see another lamination video. And of course, I also had people saying, oh, show me more. I want to show the minute details, each individual little step. Well, even for myself, it was getting a little bit monotonous in editing those videos, trying to say over and over, um, now I'm brushing, now I'm uh, cutting the material. And anyway, those little steps. But I think you've seen enough of kind of the process of actually doing laminations. Well, I think you have seen enough videos of me actually doing the handwork and kind of the techniques of putting glass and resin together. But I have a collection of videos of some of the steps we've been doing on the tub. Well, I have done quite a few more things on the tub, and so we're going to take a look at those steps just so that you can see the process of how I'm building up the strength in the laminations. So anyway, let's jump in, take a look. I have completed a couple more layers on the bulkheads, and we're going to take a look at me at least laying the cloth out. I didn't get a video of the resin going onto these surfaces. But here you can see just fitting of the cloth around a couple of pieces of the conduit that come through. And another thing that we had to form in that rear bulkhead was that little depression that we need to fit our turbo to intercooler connection pipe that makes that little bend kind of got in the way. And I've just taken this twill fabric, which uh, um, on its own is just going to bend and uh, conform to make the blister that we need. And just uh, pushing that down about two inches deep and you can see it completed there in the background with the resin done. And I've also taken this fabric and just gone right across some of these openings that I need here being the rear window. It's much easier to uh, just let your fabric lap over a hole like this and then just run your resin to the edge and trim it out rather than trying to trim it out dry and work your fabric around it. Easier to keep your fabric straight and clean by not cutting the holes prematurely. And here you can see how that blister formed with that turbo intercooler. Also did a couple layers onto the floor. A couple of bioaxial layers and a plain weave cloth. There's also a little recession or a depression here where that front subframe fits. I'm gonna be putting multiple layers in there to uh, do some extra reinforcement around that connection. I will be also adding more layers to the tunnel as well. But here we're just taking and building up the floor. Those floor layers will wrap around the outside edge and they'll wrap into the tunnel as well. The next layers on the tunnel will come up and lap onto the floor. And those next layers in the tunnel, when they come up and lap, they will be covering some connectors. I need to add some inserts so that when this thing is complete, we can put a panel on the bottom of the car to cover the tunnel, that cover will be for stiffness and for some aerodynamics. Once some laminations were done, I had um, these rain gutters found there was a little bit of a problem in these corners here. When we put those little piece of fiberglass pre-laminated panels on there, they kind of bent as they went around those corners and lifted a little bit. You can see here in this one, that I've got it marked and we'll be trimming those out and relaminating those. We need to flatten them out a little bit so that when the weather seal goes on, it doesn't stick up too high and keep the door from sealing or closing completely. So we're gonna trim it out here, finish. Do a finish trim on the right spacing for that uh, rain gutter as well. But we'll see, you'll see in a little bit going back into where I had done a repair on those corners. Now with things trimmed out and the corners repaired, I'm also going to do a little fillet. Mixed up some milled fiber cotton flock with some epoxy. Mix up about the consistency of toothpaste. Throw it in an old Ziploc bag, cut the corner off, and use that kind of as a grouting bag to squeeze it into the corner. And then just take a bolt. I found a bolt. You can find lots of them with a good radius and use that to form our fillet. 
Now we're into the point where we're getting some of these surfaces that are all done and laminated for strength. And now we're going and putting a finish layer. Now this door jam here, I've got a twill fabric because there is a lot of uh, compound curves that it needs to adapt to. And we want to get a single piece so that we have as few joints as possible. Like I said, we're trying to get finished surfaces now. And so the use of a single fabric, of course, eliminates a joint. So just a matter of laying that fabric on top to bottom. We've got some more work on the tops above this and below it, but this piece is getting finished. So saturate this thing with resin and then we'll let it cure overnight and come back and trim it. And it's simple when you have just a single layer like this, a razor blade is all you need to trim it. Like I said, we came back the next day, but even better is a few hours after the resin starting to cure where it's still a little bit soft. You can zip this thing off with a razor blade, even when it has multiple layers. But there that is all trimmed and finished. We'll just use one more layer of hard coating and that serves to be ready for paint. Now moving to the front side of this door seal, we're going to do some CAD. A lot of people like to say, and this is a joke, is a cardboard aided design to get our shape, transfer that to some foam. And we're going to build up or box in our A pillar and the door sill below it. So once I got uh, the basic shape, I just take it over just so that I can get rid of a rasp off uh, all this mess right into the trash can so I don't have to clean it up off the floor. Although that's not true, is it? There's always gonna be mess on the floor. But we'll get it shaped as close as we can and then bond it to that uh, carbon fiber stiffener that we've added into that A-pillar already. And I'm also using the old CAD method to build the shape of our bottom extension. And then we'll start trimming and finishing those. And of course, on this A-pillar, I'm gonna trim it right down up against the face of that carbon fiber stiffener so that when I put my fiberglass on, it'll wrap the foam and a bond to that carbon fiber stiffener as well, boxing that whole A-pillar in. Rough cutting it with the saw, and then you're gonna go back with the rasp and uh, get a shape, of course, radius the corners, which makes it a lot easier to uh, form the fabrics. As you know, the fabrics do not like to make those hard 90 degree bends. We'll rasp it down and then uh, go back and get a 60 grit. It's probably plenty smooth for sanding on foam. Any finer than that just seems to just rub it back and forth and not really take anything off. But anyway, we'll take 60 grit sandpaper and work it over nice and smooth. Now you'll often see me with my uh, vacuum system. Now this is just uh, one of those sawdust collection systems used in wood shops. I shouldn't say only in wood shops. It works here good to gather foam, fiberglass, and just plain clean up around the shop. That's just a vacuum system mounted outside. Keep the noise down. And even with a, a good fitting of the foam, you're always going to have a few gaps that you want to uh, fill in. I have mixed some microspheres with some epoxy. Build me a fillet paste. And I'll go around and fill, fill up the edges, fill some crack gaps. And then we'll also go back and mix up a second batch of slurry, a little bit runnier. And you, of course, have seen me do this on many occasions when I'm working around the foam. I always go back and put that slurry surface on. Now this slurry, as you're able to have time, it's a little bit thicker. You can really work it into all the pores of that foam. Whereas with the thinner resin of the fiberglass, if you're just gonna go straight onto the cloth, the foam will absorb more of that fiberglass, kind of suck it in and leave dry spots. So we, of course, coat it with this slurry and then go back and sand it down to get a nice smooth surface, which helps our glass lay right down. Now we're putting the glass on here and you'll see it also extended up on that first part of that 
A pillar, but we'll finish the A pillar once we turn this tub over. And I'm also going to um, wrap these around and there'll be some more fiberglass work done that comes from the footwell, connects onto this area as well. Okay, so how this works to increase the strength in this connection here is we have multiple places where different layers of laminations come in. So if you remember, we have the original lamination below that has all of the tubes for the conduit coming through. And that connects to this panel. And then we have one layer of the foam coming up and it connects through as well to that panel. And then we've added this new layer that comes up and makes another connection. So rather than have one place where it meets this panel, we have three. And although this comes in here, creates a hinge point where these could easily hinge on this panel, we do have the main footwell lateral bulkhead coming through here, which is really most of the strength in here. But we're going to fix that by increase, changing this so that it doesn't have a hinge point here. This, in the end, will have one more round where this actually connects through here. But that is going to be part of the dash here. And so that will come in later as we're doing some more finish work. And that is how we're going to keep this joint carrying all the way through with these laterals, even though most of the strength in portion is going to be in the tunnel. Now, the last thing we're going to look at in this video is adding one more set of fabrics to the finish the tunnel interior. So we're going to add another layer of biaxial cloth and a layer of plain weave to get a nice clean surface. Now, when you embark on an engineering project, you should always have some design objectives or maybe all your design objectives spelled out ahead of time. Now, with this car, there was never a design point of making a luxurious, comfortable, ready to compete with the multi-million dollar hypercars out there. So a lot of people have commented that the tunnel is just too big or wide. Now, if I had imagined this car sitting in a showroom somewhere and some widely proportioned middle-aged gentleman sitting in the seat to see how it felt, I'd have had to consider the tunnel situation a little differently. In fact, I'd have almost certainly have opted for a rear-mounted transaxle that just eliminated the tunnel completely. But I've never had plans to produce this car, or at least not in its present configuration. My butt and my wife's butt are gonna fit just fine. We may be wedged in a bit and uh, not be able to hold hands, but the plan is that I'll be driving and she'll be holding on for dear life anyway. In actuality, the proportions of the tunnel that seem so ridiculously wide or that area that attaches to the rear bulkhead. It's way behind the seats anyway. There's going to be kind of a secondary bulkhead that forms the seat back and also forms kind of a compartment for the electronics and the climate controls. Now, typically, this is where the fuel cell is located in many mid-engine cars. But most of those have rear-mounted transaxles that we're talking about before anyway. Now, I've chosen not to put the fuel cells here as the transmission would just split the tank in two and it just takes up too much space anyway. When we get the final layers on the interior of the tunnel, it's going to be really close to being ready to finish with some hard surface for painting and, or upholstery. Now I haven't completely decided on what that surface is going to be. Um, maybe you can add your two cents in the comments of which direction you think I should go. Paint or upholstery? You let me know what you think. As you can see, there are starting to be a few other surfaces that are getting this point as well, which means we're on the downhill side of this. I'm really close to being able to drill holes for mounting the metal subframes. And with that done, I can start to attach things together a bit more permanently. Now I say permanently, but in the end, everything is gonna come apart. We're gonna take everything apart for that final finish, sanding, painting, and then there will be a final assembly, but that's a ways off. But you can see I'm taking some plain weave cloth and covering that biaxial, which is always just a little bit rougher. That plain weave also makes it so that I can use the roller and the squeegee. It seems to, especially the squeegee, seems to glide on the plain weave fabrics a lot better and be able to press the resin out. Now here on this back one, sorry, a little bit blurry but as uh, the troubles of me being my own cameraman are showing here, get the camera ready. And then once you get to work, the camera seemed to have snapped and focused on that B pillar. But you get the idea of uh, the whole process here again. And you have seen that of course before. 
put down the heavier cloths, get as much resin as you can in there to uh, loosen up the fibers, get them to bond to the surface, put the plain weave on, squeegee it, roll it, get as much resin back out as you can to the fine surface. And here we have our finished tunnel ready to go. Looking good. <laughs>